And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Zoom, Thrive, uh, Thriving Beyond Simply Surviving. Any questions before? Oh, we have some Hebrew in the chat, so I might ask that girl to translate it in the chat uh, as well. I'm here to translate. Uh, uh, I cannot hear you. Oh. But I will translate if needed. Got it. Perfect. Thank you, dear. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We have quite a few countries here today, so that's wonderful. And so Thriving Beyond Surviving, for me, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself for people who don't know me. Uh, I'm Helen Gidlovich, medical doctor and facility of access consciousness, as well as um, teacher and founder of School of Akasha Krakas. So this Zoom is probably a little bit more about access. I think that was created based on a class coming up in Netherlands with uh, Ellen and Lena uh, that we're going to be doing three-day body class. How can we thrive with our bodies? For me, I came to access six year, uh, over six years ago, basically in trouble, I would say, because I had open heart surgery, depression, multiple medical problems, multiple emotional stuff going on, and access has changed that completely, which is been a miracle for me because I've done a lot of different modalities. And Tools of Access has been pretty much the fastest so far that I've seen that worked for me and for a lot of people. So with the first bars class, I pretty much lost my claustrophobia fear of heights. And slowly with foundation and other classes, especially with body classes, my body started changing, started having less pain. And I'd like to talk a lot about the pain in our bodies because that's where the thriving comes in. Because when we are in pain, or at least when I was in pain, I barely could survive. And when I came to access, I found out, wait a second, a lot of this pain might not be even mine. So I'd like to introduce uh, for people who are new to access and for people who've been in access for a while, very new tool. It's extremely new tool. A question. Being in a question always creates different reality. When we are looking for the answers, when we are looking for conclusions, when we are looking for definitions and diagnosis, we're stopping the energy flow. We're pretty much being in that space. Instead of creating possibility, we're creating illnesses. Because even if it wasn't there, it our body will start creating, proving whatever we are feeling is true. So if a person is having back pain, guess what? Uh, after a while, there would be a problem with disc in the spine. There would be uh, some kind of problem with the spinal stenosis maybe, maybe some broken bones, maybe some different problem with the muscles, who knows what the body will create to prove that the back pain is real. When in reality, when we, if we ask the question, and it can be as simple as what it is, what is that? What do I do with it? Can I change it and how can I change it? Pretty much those four questions can cover so much. But a lot of times when we ask that question, what is that, we might get Awareness that's not even ours. And that's another question, who does it belong to? The more questions we ask, 
the more we um, create a different reality with our bodies, with our lives. And by the way, you can ask any questions here. You can either type it in the chat or um, just unmute yourself and ask those questions. And you can, we can talk about the bodies, we can talk about money, because the body is one creating everything and money lives in this, uh, money, <laughs> body lives in this reality creating money. So thriving to me is much more than just being present in our lives or having ease with the body it's everything thriving is creating abundance thriving is being happy thriving is having joy in our lives as simply as just looking out of the window and seeing even if it's raining be happy that it's raining the earth is receiving so with the pain, a lot of times we look outside and see the rain and automatically assume that, oh, my body will be aching. How many of you had that um, point of view that we bought it from other people, that the weather can affect us? Is that actually true? That's another question you can ask. Is that true? Is that pain real? Because how many times that pain could be emotional? It's about choosing to create a different reality with everything by simply choosing, by asking the question. And as I said, not looking for the answer. How many of you are taught in school by parents that we have to find the right answer. <laughs> Would you give that up, please? Would you give up looking for the right, perfect, correct answer that would unlock and magically change everything? Yeah, because with looking for that answer, a lot of times we're missing the possibility of something different. When we ask the questions, the possibilities just show up. Before I came to access, I actually was asking what else is possible, maybe in, in such words, but I was desperate. I was looking for something that would change. I was done being in pain. I was done creating all that financial troubles, that um, problems with relationships, problems with my body, problems with everything pretty much, problems with in the family. And I was like, I'm done with that. I put a demand in the universe. The question is putting a demand in the universe's court, should we say. It's like, universe, what else is possible here? And the universe is there for us. It has our backs, so it opens a different possibility. So somebody called me up and says, Helen, there is a bars class. I had no idea what the bars were. <laughs> but the energy was there that kind of like, almost like a magnet, drew me into that. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming. What is that? What if we were that energy of just being like a magnet to the possibility of everything that's around us that can contribute to us? That's what thriving is. Thriving is about receiving. Thriving is about being open to anything that can create a difference in our lives. To me, abundance is not just money. Abundance is everything. So is thriving. They go hand in hand together. When we thriving, the abundance is there. 
same as when we have abundance, we're actually thriving, saying that there is a difference. There is that thriving is more being present in your lives. How many of you are actually not present in your life? How many of you are aware of everything you're doing, why you're doing, how you're doing, and when you're doing, and who is actually doing all of this? I know a lot of times I was not. Even now, there are moments when I'm on autopilot. Thriving is being present, knowing what you're being, knowing what you're doing. So I'm actually sensing there are some questions. So anybody has a question here? No? And by the way, this is safe environment. I'll ask everybody like everything. Um, so how do we create the space for an answer that we really want? Oh, cool. <laughs> no, the answer is not the thinking over versus a universe response. So, Susan, actually, when you, um, where are you? Um, can you unmute yourself so I, we can chat? Yes. Hi, Susan. Hi. <laughs> so, um, the, the answer that you really want. Is it actually a question or is it already a conclusion? It's the conclusion, definitely. Yeah. So are you willing to give up all the conclusions? Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Thank you. Right. I'm going to talk about online interest, please. Yes. So what is the value of looking for the conclusions in your life? What's the value? Yeah. Of looking for the conclusions, for the right answer, for that answer that you're Safe, waiting to safety, being in control, knowing what's happening. Yeah, and is it working for you at this moment? No. Would you be willing to let go of that? Yes. Cool. Right on with that but on natural business. By the way, is everybody familiar with clearing statement? Yes. Okay. So I'm kind of assuming that majority of you know what the clearing statement is, which is right and wrong, good and bad, fuck and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds, which is a magic wand, which clears a lot of things that we're stuck in. So with desiring certain outcome or vested in the outcome, I think Dom is answering that, but that's kind of part of looking for that right, correct answer which we already decided, by the way, that that's how it's supposed to be or what we're supposed to do, where universe actually does not have an, even an option to give us anything that we just actually desire. Because when we are in that conclusion, how much can come in into our lives that does not match it? Nothing. Nothing can come in other than our conclusions or judgments. What happens when you've been letting go a long time and then you just decided to stop? Well, what does that, uh, can you speak up a little bit more? What, um, is, what is happening when your, your opening has been there for letting go for a long time and there were not answers, so you just decided to stop and take actions? Oh, and that's then, then you're stuck in controlling it. Yeah. Uh, how many conclusions do you have that the universe has to give you and you don't have to do anything? Well, I think I've been in that place where it looked like I was sitting still and waiting for a helicopter to land to save me that wasn't happening. So I decided it was action time. Exactly. Because being present in your life, it's actually, and being is about action. It's not about waiting for something. It's following the energy. So everywhere where you decided that you have to sit and wait for something to happen to you, 
instead of you choosing a different possibility, will you destroy and create that? Yes. That's in the bed back battle mantras, which means in reality, I know everybody's familiar with secret. They talk about the putting out the intention and waiting for it. They do not talk about number four, action. There is always has to be an action. Saying that the action does not have to be what we think it is. Sometimes resting can be an action. Cleaning a closet can be an action that's required to open something different in your money situation. But there has to be some sort of moving the energy or exchange of energy. So everywhere we decided that you have to survive in this reality, how much did you decide that you have to survive instead of thrive, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you are doing the same thing? <laughs> so would you give up that survival mode? It feels like simplicity. But is it actually true? No. No. How much does that complicate things by being in the survival mode? How okay. much, yeah, how much energy do you have to use to be in that survival mode, to stop yourself from creating? In like what you were describing when you were waiting for something to happen, how much energy did it take you actually? to be in that space and stop you from action and waiting for the universe to answer instead of going and doing something that you knew you were going to do anyway? It, it looked like action, getting ill, and non-action because it seemed like that action wasn't going anywhere and it repeated. Yeah, so how many cycles you've been using to keep yourself small and in the past and then that survival and small life that you're choosing. Everything that is we destroy and create that. Right and wrong, going back, back and pat all nine shirts with me hands. Let's all do that. Let's see what we actually are and how much energy we are actually using to suppress ourselves. So I, I'm sorry, you're like the, the, <laughs> the, I put you on the spot. Acting. But where are you right now? Um, where is your energy, your consciousness? Are you in your body, outside your body, in the part of your body contracted? I'm in my body. Fully or just in a certain part? In the head, in the heart? Um, I think it moves around a bit. It, cool. it kind of dances. So what if you drop your barriers to yourself first? Um, the outside barriers can stay for now, but drop your barriers to you and see if you can fully embody you. Drop well, more. Fully and fully embody me meaning. Don't think. Okay. Just choose that. Be inside. Because this is not verbal, this is not cognitive. It's just a choice. Just tell yourself I'm dropping all the barriers to me and I'm going to embody me now in a split second. Right on the back but I'll mention was in the end. And so where are you right now? Being. Being, yeah. Is it different now? For the moment. Yeah. 
Does it take more or less energy to contain you now? Probably less. Yeah, because you use that energy to contain you, to put the barriers around you, so you don't even see you. So what if you stop doing that? What if you chose to be you, no matter what it looks like? How much more energy would be available for you to create your life? Right, wrong with your pat pat, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Now let's go a little bit further. Would you be willing to drop the barriers that keeps you inside your body? If you drop your barriers to outside world, and the barriers outside world to you. Okay. I don't get talk about all nine shorts, boys, miss, and expand just a little bit. Just maybe to the si size of the other barriers that's outside you. <laughs> that maybe, maybe a meter or a few feet away, depending on which, con which country are you in? US. US? Okay. So just expand to the other barriers that you put up to the outside world. Is it less energy to be that or more energy? It feels like it takes more energy to do that. Is it to take more energy or you have more energy now? What's true? It feels like it takes more energy. Okay, so would you be willing to drop those barriers now? And expand to the size of the room you're in and beyond? Maybe a couple of kilometers or miles, because you're in the state, a couple of miles, maybe 10 miles. Okay. Is it easier or harder to be that? Um, I think easier. It doesn't seem real different. Yeah. So how much energy were you putting on those barriers? Um, so, a little bit. A little yeah. Bit. So what if you didn't use the barriers to anything? So what if you were that expanded, at least like 10, kilo, 10 miles? How much more can you create? Probably a lot more. Yeah. So now let's go even more. Let's go 100 miles and then 1,000 miles, but go in all directions. Up, down, sideways, everywhere, into the earth, up into the air, and keep expanding. 1,000 miles. Make yourself as big as the whole United States. Now North America, South America. And now the whole world. It wants to expand, but it wants to come back to being safe. Yeah. So who wants to be contracted? Is there something or someone that keeps you small? Yeah. Would you let go of that? Is it, by the way, is it your parents? Is it something else? It's hurt from others. It's hurt. Yeah. Would you let go of that? Would you be willing to send it where it came from? Yeah. Let's do it together. Go back to from whence you came. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to me, our, to us, our bodies, our reality ever again. Nobody else do that because it might change your life too. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Please, let's do it together. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to us, our bodies, our reality ever again. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to us, our bodies, our reality again. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to us, our bodies, our reality again. 
right along with that but but online shorts boys and dance because that hurt those emotions that keeps us small how much energy does it keep to keep them in would you let them go completely right and longer than that all the implants of hurt all the um agendas everything all the secret agendas she cues as we call them secret hidden undisclosed and covered unseen and uh invisible all of those agendas and implants will you destroy and uncreate that and everything that holds it in place right and wrong good and bad luck and battle nine shirts boys and nails <sighs> And now go from your heart and just expand that. How is that? Um, yeah. Let's go to infinity. Throw out all the solar systems to everything. Millions of miles. And just keep expanding into space. How much energy does it take to be that? Nothing. Yeah. It's much easier because we waste so much energy on trying to survive as a little things on this earth. Like those li and making ourselves little humans. So what if we didn't make ourselves little humans? What if we be that infinite being? and use all that energy for creation of our lives, for striving, for being present in our lives so we can create what we actually desire, not what we are afraid of or resist to. How many of you created what we resist to <laughs> and fearful? Because it doesn't matter, we can create consciously or unconsciously or anti-consciously just by our thoughts, feelings, and emotions, we're still creating. But what if we start creating from question? What can I be here? What can I be or do here that can change that? What action do I need? Or what energy can I be that can create beyond surviving, that can create thriving. And anything that doesn't allow that, just pack and pot that. Right and wrong, good and bad, pack and pot all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So how you be? <laughs> Little different? Yes. Thank you, Susan, for your question. That's been an amazing question. And please don't ask questions. Just go to conclusion. That will create more, right? <laughs> no. 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 Thank you. Any other questions? Or did I fry your brains? <laughs> Anybody? Let's see. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the tool that we started talking a little bit about. Paula, who does it belong to? Oh. Hello, oh. Paula and uh, yeah. wanted to ask a question. <laughs> My question is um, not being consciousness and the um, autopilot, is it like being uh, multitasking? To do not a lot? necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, unconsciously is going like an autopilot. When you're doing things and you have no idea what you're doing, it can be multitasking, but multitasking can be conscious or unconscious. And anti-conscious is pretty much, we know exactly what to do. We perfectly know what to do or not to do and do the opposite. Okay. Sometimes hurting ourselves in the process. Sometimes like knowing that, let's say 
um, I know I shouldn't eat that cake because I already full. <laughs> like for my body, and my body saying that's enough. And I'm like, I know I shouldn't be doing it, but I do that anyway. So, Paula, does it uh, kind of like gives you? Huh? What? Yeah, perfect. Because often it's now, it was first, it was the hype to be uh, multitasking. And uh -huh. now people say, no, multitasking is not good because you're in consciousness. Because you are conscious with one thing. Um, are you humanoid? <laughs> Yeah, humanoids a lot of times, like we, um, a lot of people are what's called compulsive creators. Uh, and they need, and especially like if you are ADD, attention deficit disorder, which is pretty much um, a co compulsive uh, creators. It's opposite to what this reality teaches you. You do need to multitask because that's how you can create more. Okay. So when you get bored, you actually become more unconscious. <laughs> okay. So if you're bored and creating some things that do not work in your life, add something else to your life. Yeah. So all the judgments you have about multitasking and everything that you bought, from other people that multitasking is bad. Will you destroy and create that? Yay. <laughs> I don't get that pattern mentors business. And Paula, always ask. We started with asking the question. Don't go into conclusion the multitasking is bad or multitasking is unconscious. Mm -hmm. And it might be. Like at a certain point, you might add so much to your life that you become unconscious. Mm -hmm. So yeah. ask is that will create more in my life or will it create less or decay my life? Because everything either creates or decays. Either um, create life or kills. So just be the question. Thank you. Thank you. And that's part of thriving. What works for you? Because multitasking might work for you, but not for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So would you be willing to look at what works for you instead of against you? Yeah. Thank you. Right on with that but on nine shirts, boys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, so we started talking about who does it belong to. Um, and that question can open so much more because especially when we, um, this morning I was talking to somebody and we were talking about that a lot of times we stop ourselves from thriving based on our parents' reality. We do not want to be bigger than them because they're so entrained us to being small that we are barely surviving just like they survived. We cannot thrive beyond them. So would you be willing to go beyond your parents and thrive beyond them, outcreate them for all eternity? Thank you, Raidron Lupia Takpat on Nine Shorts, Boys and Beyonds. A lot of times, with, especially with the parents, we look to them either as a role model and wanting to be like them or desiring not to be like them, never repeat the same mistakes as they did or never do things that they do. With that, a lot of times comes making ourselves less than we actually are because we have to mimic them. We have to make their mistakes before we can choose something different. So are you willing to give up making parents' mistakes or be like them or never be like them 
Will you destroy and create that? I don't know, good in the back and battle, mantras, boys and beyonds. So we started talking about bodies and pain and who does it belong to and asking questions and we kind of went a little bit out, but that's okay because that's part of it. Life is more than just one thing and thriving is much more than just one area of our lives that we decided is not working. How many of you decided that one area is not working? Maybe this is working, but this is not working. What if everything is opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is opposite of what it appears to be? So what if the area we decided is not working is something that actually requiring energy and it is your greatest strength that you suppressed. So would you be willing to stop judging you, your life, and everything that's in there and ask, what is that? What do I do with it? Can I change it? How can I change it? Especially with body, especially with pain. Because a lot of times with the bodies, um, I know we have a lot of body processes that unlock so much. And a lot of it has been part of what our parents or schools or life gave to us and locked it in the body. So by asking who does it belong to, we can shift a lot of things, even not knowing who does it belong to. Will you be willing to let go of everything that you bought from other people and send it back? Thank you, Red Rongo Tia Tak Pat Online Shirts, Boys and Beyonds. Cool. I'm sensing some other questions. So, what's going on with people? Helen, hi. Hi, Helen. Uh -huh. hi, hi. And you, you were talking about the, the part that is your strength with regard to the body. Can, can you say more about that? I'm not really getting it. Um, I was talking about two different areas of our lives that could be our strengths, but we decided it's not working. It doesn't have to be just body. It can be relationship, it can be body. Um, a lot of times with a body, a little backtrack. So something is not working is usually because we're stopping ourselves. We are limiting ourselves. One of the ways we can limit ourselves is by creating illness in the body. Sometimes in the body doesn't have any points of view. So what body does is like, oh, you don't want to go there. You don't want to teach a class. Let's say that. It's like, okay, you don't want to teach class. Let's make an excuse. Let's make you sick. Mm -hmm. Is that a limitation or is it a strength? It can be a strength because if you recognize that, how powerful you are, that you created the illness in your body, guess what? You can uncreate it as easily as creating it. All it takes is just a choice. Because we talk a lot about clearings, we talk about body processes, we talk about energy. In reality, this all comes down to choice. Everything is a choice. We create um, everything in our lives based on what we choose. And the choices doesn't have to be conscious. People say, but people choose cancer. Is it conscious? How can they choose that? Those choices are unconscious and anti-conscious. A lot of times people almost kill themselves just because they do not want to step into their power. So everywhere where we're refusing our power and creating illnesses based on that contraction, will you destroy and create that? 
we also a lot of times make ourselves small and less powerful based on other people's projection and expectation. We buy into them. And it might be our strengths. They see our strengths and they want to make us small. And they tell us, it's like, oh, you cannot be that strong. And then we buy it. And creating that, that goes opposite to the strengths we actually have. So a lot of times with tools of access that we use in classes or in workshops, it allows us to uncover those unconscious and anti-conscious thoughts, feelings, and emotions or judgments that we put on ourselves or other people put on ourselves. And that changes the whole, not just perspective, but it also changes our lives, our bodies, and relationship, money, everything. So it allows us to thrive in this reality where everybody survives. As what you just said is that the cancer is uh, created most unconsciousness, not unconscious. Mm -hmm. And what for me there is, a, well, somewhere in my universe, there is a fear. Okay, I'm may am I creating it unconsciously? Mm -hmm. And there, yeah, the. Just there, there is a fear like that for, oh my God, especially it comes up when people in the surrounding you here, they have breast cancer, they have, they have this, they have that. Oh my God, I'm not creating that. What is it? So that. Right. So how much are you aware of people creating it? Who does it belong to? Yeah. So will you return it back, destroy and uncreate everything you're buying? Right, wrong, good, bad, 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 all nine truths, wisdom, and truth. Are you actually creating cancer or are you aware? Being aware. Yeah. So that's kind of like being in the question because did you notice when you said, I'm afraid that I'm creating cancer? Is that a question or a conclusion? It's a conclusion. Yes. Yeah. Remember we started with part of thriving is being the question being in the question being question it's about never going into conclusion always asking it's like and whenever the thoughts like that come in go into what is that and you might get immediately oh that's my awareness of other people's thoughts feelings and emotions do you work a lot with cancer patients no but i have had in the family Cool. So everywhere where you're going into conclusion that if your family has it, you will get it and you will create it. Will you destroy and uncreate that? Yes. And send it back to them. I don't get that, but all my insurance was Um Well, it is also with uh, my sister-in-law. She died of breast cancer. And till now, I haven't done the research for breast cancer because it doesn't feel like to do it. But when they, people say, well, you have to do it because there is, we can discover the little things and I'm resisting just doing it because, yeah. But then there is the, the reality and my consciousness and my, yeah. So what yeah. do you know? Do you what, actually, is that? what do you know? Do you need that test to prove to you that you're creating or not creating? No. no okay okay so whose lies what lies and how many lies are you buying yeah you start creating illnesses in your body based on other people's realities mm. everything that is we just trying to create that yes right on with that but on my insurance was meant what if you were a so truth, are you aware of everything that's going on with your body? Or there are places where you're not, where you're still having barriers to you? Yes. Yeah. So everything that is, and everywhere where you're still putting up the barriers to you, 
Will you just join and create that? Yes. Right and wrong couldn't be a buck and butt online shirts, boys and beyonds. What is that putting the barriers up to yourself? What? Remember I worked with Cindy? Um, so close your eyes and just allow yourself to drop the barriers you have to yourself. Is it easier to breathe? Is it lighter in your body when you did that? Are you more aware of you? It's strange, but it is, it is hard. It's difficult. So it's like, I don't feel at ease at all. So did you actually drop the barriers or did you put them even more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to laugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what, what's the value of putting the barriers up to yourself? And even more when you're asked to drop them. Not being aware. Yeah. So what's the value in that? Not to go beyond what I know, to go beyond what I can create. Mm -hmm. And what's the value in that? Cool. Yeah, that right there. What's that? And it might not be even verbal. It might um, be just energy. Huh? With, there's an energy on, on, on it. Yeah. Are you willing to destroy and uncreate that energy? Yeah. That's stopping you. Thank you, right wrong with that papa on nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So now would you be willing to drop the barriers? <laughs> it's so silly, but <laughs> no, there's there's resistance in that or right. So whose lies did you whose what lies and how many lies did you buy in regards to that? Ooh, a lot. All of that will you destroy on Kate up? Yes. That room with the fuck but online shirts, boys and beyonds. Are you still there? What the <laughs> hmm? Okay. So everything that is and will you just join on Kata? Yes. Right wrong with your back but online shorts boys me and so what is that? What's the resistance there? What did you say? What's the resistance right now? What does that resistance represent? Only that will you just try and create that? Yes. Right on with that battle, nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Yeah, the barriers to receiving you, this is barriers like not just to receiving you, the barriers are to just being you. So, and a lot of times we put up the barriers at very early age uh, for some reason for maybe picked it up as mimicking the parents even before we could speak. So a lot of it might be energetic. Mm -hmm. So, what's the resistance to actually being you and seeing you and receiving you? All of that, will you destroy and uncreate that? Yes. Right on with that, but, but on the answer, it's both and beyonds. Is what you just said, is noticing, seeing the barriers all other people put up and it is like just I just copy it. it that it's mm -hmm. 
normal to live with the barriers up instead right. of down. Yeah. So are you willing to return it back and drop your barriers to yourself? Yes. And just yeah. be yourself? Yeah. Thank you. Right on the path of that unmentioned business. There is more, more space now. Yeah. Thank you. Much like easier. Yeah. A lot of times that's what holds us back. Because we don't even know who we are. We don't we have like I know with me, I had no idea what I desired, what I was for a long time. To the point of I remember when I was married, I was told by my husband what I actually like to eat. <laughs> what my favorite food. And I'm like, wait. When I got divorced, I'm like, wait, this is not my favorite food. Because <laughs> he decided that my favorite food was hot dogs. And it's like, no. So how many of you put up so many barriers based on other people's judgments to yourself so you don't even see yourself? For protection, whatever it is, are you willing at this moment just drop your barriers and be you and allow yourself to be present with who you are. Because that's how you start thriving beyond surviving. Right and wrong and beyond, back and back, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. We're coming to kind of like the end of our Zoom. Um, just wanted to do a little commercial. I was doing a few classes. Uh, one with Ellen and uh, Liana in Netherlands, in Rotterdam, in December. I started from like, <laughs> yeah. December 7 through 9, I'm doing um, a few classes in Israel with that girl. Hi, that girl. Hello. Uh, shalom, shalom. Shalom. Uh, we are doing body class, three-day body class, foundation in Haifa, and then I'm doing Akasha Crackers in Haifa, and in, uh, what's Makabim. it? Sh Makabim. Ah? Makabim. Makabim. Mm -hmm. So it's all going to be between um, August, 30th of August, 30th of August, and 14th of September. September. It's Helen's tour, right? Exactly, a tour of Israel, and then I'm going to Maestro, of course. <laughs> and whoever is coming with me, hi, <laughs> we'll see each other in Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, also in Chicago, I'm doing with Heather. Are you here, Heather? Uh, McMillan, uh, we're doing bars class and. She's doing Talk to the Entities class. So how cool is that? How much more can we thrive with talking to the entities, working with them, or clearing them? And it's in Chicago, weekend of 17, 18, and 19. Hey. Moscow? Yeah, hi, Heather. <laughs> and it's, for a lot of you, it's just a short flight to Chicago, or it might be a long flight but it's well worth it, <laughs> I would say. And we can drop the barriers uh, with us, with entities, and have fun with that. And then facelift, of course. And then there is a class in Moscow. Yay! And they're posting me in November. <laughs> and then El Salvador in November, too. <laughs> what else is possible? What else is possible? You can have a body class on the beach because we're renting a couple of houses on the beach in El Salvador by San Salvador, which is wow. not going to be a contribution to your bodies, or would it? <laughs> what else is possible? So I hope to see you soon, and um, I'll see you next time. We're doing another Zoom in Russian, whoever speaks Russian in a couple of weeks. Right, Lena? Uh, yes, on 23 uh, August, it will be in Russian, but mm -hmm. I think we will be make uh, very soon a Zoom in 
wish. <laughs> okay, yeah, we do more. And I was planning to do actual um, a few classes, like a series of five or six classes on thriving beyond surviving. I'll let you know when it's coming. Wow. So Great. we can delve into what stops us in much more details. Might be coming up in uh, September or October. Great. Awesome. Well, and it might be translated into a couple of languages, maybe Hebrew, Holland, uh, and couple, and maybe Russian. We'll see. So Helen, we are counting the days till you're coming to Israel. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> There's huge, huge success the last two times that you arrived and mm -hmm. uh, people are waiting <laughs> for you. Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait. It's such a gift, all of you guys, to be with you and to join you and see the shifts and changes what we create in the world. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you till next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.